Welcome back to BE 110. Today we're going to begin deriving the conservation laws for continua by deriving the conservation of mass. Now there are actually two versions of conservation of mass for a continuum. They represent the same physical principle, but one of them is a Lagrangian form, so mass conservation as seen by a material observer, and the other is an Eulerian form, mass conservation as seen by a fixed spatial observer. So first we'll derive the Lagrangian form of mass conservation, and to do that we'll consider a deforming body with a motion described using a Lagrangian material representation as little x equals little x of big X and T. And from this we can get the components of the deformation gradient tensor, FIR, being the partial derivatives of little xi with respect to big XR. Now, conservation of the mass contained within a closed material region, R, can then be expressed as follows. The triple integral over the region R of rho naught, the underformed density, with respect to volume in the underformed state, is equal to the triple integral over R of the deformed density with respect to the deformed volume, dV. Or, writing this in components, the triple integral of rho naught, the underformed density, with respect to d big x1, d big x2, and d big x3, is equal to the triple integral over r of rho, the current density, d little x1, d little x2, d little x3. Now we need to convert uh, deformed coordinates to underformed coordinates in our integral. And the way we do that is to use the partial derivatives in a chain rule, del xi, del xr. And in fact, the expression that you get if you derive the conversion from d little x1, d little x2, and d little x3 to d big x1, d big x2, d big x3 is actually the determinant of del xi, del xr. And that's known as the volume integral Jacobian. And as you can see, it's equal to the determinant of the deformation gradient. So therefore we can now write our integral equation as the triple integral over r of rho naught the underformed density with respect to underformed coordinates dx1, dx2, dx3 is equal to the triple integral with respect to r of rho the deformed density times the determinant of f d big x1, d big x2, d big x3. Here we observe that the region R is completely arbitrary. We could choose any and every region R, and this must still be valid. Therefore, the integrand itself, these terms here, must identically be satisfied, or the difference must be identically zero, which would therefore give us that rho naught must equal rho times the determinant of f. So that's our conservation of mass in the Lagrangian form, which we could also write as rho naught over rho, the underformed density over the deformed density equals the determinant of f, which is therefore equal to the deformed volume over the underformed volume. So this is the Lagrangian form of mass conservation for a continuum. To illustrate this, let's consider a unit cube whose sides are aligned with the principal axes of stretch. After the deformation, the sides would now have lengths lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3, which are the three eigenvalues of the stretch tensor U. 
So they are the principal stretches. So here we see that in this diagram. Original unit cube now has dimensions lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. The determinant of f from the polar decomposition theorem is also the determinant of r times u, which equals the determinant of r times the determinant of u. Now, r is an orthogonal rotation tensor, and so its determinant is 1. meaning that the determinant of f must equal the determinant of u, which in this case would be the product of the principal stretches lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, which of course is the deformed volume of our original unit cube, which had undeformed volume of 1 by 1 by 1, and therefore the ratio of the deformed volume to the undeformed volume, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, is the determinant of f, as we expected. If a material is incompressible, that means its density is constant, and material volumes don't change, so rho is equal to rho naught, or d little v is equal to d big v. Therefore, conservation of mass states that the determinant of f equals 1 for an incompressible continuum. This is sometimes known as the kinematic incompressibility constraint. So if a continuum is incompressible, we can use this constraint to determine part of the stretch. For example, given lambda 1 and lambda 2 as principal stretches in an incompressible material, we can use a kinematic incompressibility constraint to show that lambda 3, the third principal stretch, must be 1 over lambda 1 times lambda 2. Now, Next, let's look at the case of an infinitesimal strain field and infinitesimal rotations, in other words, where the displacement gradients are small. So we'll expand the components of the deformation gradient tensor in terms of the displacement gradients. In other words, Fir equals del ui del xr plus delta ir, and therefore the determinant of f will be the determinant of the following matrix del u1 del x1 plus 1 del u1 del x2 del u1 del x3 in the first row del u2 del x1 del u2 del x2 plus 1 and del u2 del x3 in the second row and del u3 del x1, del u3 del x2, del u3 del x3 plus 1 in the third row. So the determinant of this matrix will be del u1 del x1 plus 1, this term here, times the determinant of this submatrix, which is del u2 del x2 plus 1, times del u3 del x3 plus 1, minus del u2 del x3 del u3 del x2 minus this term del u1 del x2 times the determinant of this submatrix del u2 del x1 times del u3 del x3 plus 1 minus del u2 del x3 times del u3 del x1 plus del u1 del x3 times the determinant of this submatrix, del u2 del x1 times del u3 del x2, minus del u2 del x2 plus 1 times del u3 del x1. Now, if we look at this expression, we see that all of the terms 
here, 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 and here, all involve quadratic or higher combinations of these derivatives. So we get 1, this product there, plus del u1 del x1 plus del u2 del x2 plus del u3 del x3 plus a lot of terms that are all of order del ui del xr squared or smaller. So if del ui del xr is much less than 1, then terms of order del ui del xr squared and smaller are even less than 1, and so the determinant of f is approximately equal to 1 plus del ui del xi for small displacement gradients. Now remembering that the Cauchy strain tensor epsilon ij is del ui del xj plus del uj del xi divided by 2, you can see that del ui del xi is just eii, the trace of epsilon. So in other words, in the limit of infinitesimal strains and rotations, the determinant of f is 1 plus the trace of epsilon. The trace of epsilon will be 0 if there's no volume change, positive if it's greater than 0, negative if it's shrinking, and this term is called the dilatation. So now let's derive the Eulerian form of mass consequence conservation for a continuum. So the Eulerian form of conservation of mass is the form that's typically used for fluid flows and is often referred to as the continuity equation. So stating mass conservation in words from the point of view of a fixed Eulerian spatial observer watching fluid flow into and out of a fixed spatial region, which is often referred to in fluid mechanics as a control volume, we can write the following. The rate of change of mass contained in the fixed spatial region R must equal the rate at which mass flows into that region R across its boundary S. So mathematically, the rate of change of mass would be the integral of the rate of change of density with respect to volume, so the triple integral over R of d rho dt d little v, and then the rate at which mass flows into the region if we subtract that from both sides, we would now add the rate at which mass flows out of the region, and that's given by the surface integral of rho times v dot n ds, where v is the velocity vector, n is the outward normal to s. So v dot n represents the component of the velocity that is going out away from, across the surface, away from R. And that velocity is convecting mass with it of density rho. So multiplying rho times that component of the velocity gives the rate of change at which mass is leaving R, which is the negative of, which, of the rate at which mass is entering R, and hence it's on the other side. So now, applying the divergence theorem to convert this surface integral into a volume integral, we obtain that the triple integral over R of d rho dt plus the divergence of rho v with respect to volume is equal to zero. And again, since our region R is entirely arbitrary, that means the integrand itself, the terms inside the integral, must be identically satisfied. This term must be identically zero. And so we get del rho del t plus div rho v is equal to zero. 
and this is our first version of the Eulerian form of conservation of mass. Now writing this in index notation, this would be del rho del t plus vi del rho del xi plus rho del vi del xi, because this divergence of a product will result in two terms when we expand the derivative. Notice these first two terms, del rho del t plus vi del rho del xi, are the same as the material derivative, capital D rho dt. And the second term, del vi del xi, is just the divergence of v times rho. So this is the second form of the conservation of mass for an Eulerian description. Now, again, if we have an incompressible material, then the density from the point of view of the material is constant. In other words, the material derivative of the density d rho dt is equal to zero. And therefore, our conservation of mass simplifies to div v, which is del vi del xi, which is also DII, the trace of the rate of deformation tensor, must all be zero. So that is the Eulerian form of conservation of mass for an incompressible continuum. So next time we'll go on and we'll derive the conservation laws for uh, linear momentum, angular momentum, and, and energy.